First of all, thank you so much for coming. Uh, as I said earlier, I was a bit worried that no one was going to come because the room was completely empty like seven minutes ago. So I was thinking maybe I should forget about GraphQL and just stick to REST, but, but I'm glad you're here. So it means I'm not the only one with, a, you know, with this question that I'm going to be talking about today, which is you know, GraphQL as an alternative approach to, to, to REST, as, a, as an architectural style to build APIs. So uh, just very briefly introducing myself. Uh, my name is Luis Weir. Uh, as you can tell from my accent, I'm not from the UK, although I live here. I'm from Venezuela originally, but I've been here for like 10 years. Uh, I'm the CTO for the Oracle practice of Capgemini UK, uh, but also uh, I'm an API uh, uh, junkie, if you can call it like that. So I'm quite into the topic of APIs. Uh, I've written, actually, uh, I'm writing my fourth book. I don't have the other ones because they're a bit old, but uh, on the topic of APIs and API management. And also I keep my blog and so on. I've done a few talks on the topic in Java 1, for example, last year and other conferences around the world. Um, I'm not, uh, as you may, may imagine, a, a GraphQL guru. Uh, I, I know GraphQL enough to, to, you know, to come here and talk about it. And I think this is important to, to explain this because uh, I, I want to be quite honest in my feedback. I'm not a Facebook guy coming here trying to sell you GraphQL. I'm here to, to, you know, to share my knowledge on, on GraphQL, what I've you know, having done REST for several years now, before that, having done SOAP and Whistle for many years as well, I just want to, you know, uh, uh, explain, right, what my findings are and give a bit more uh, uh, in, uh, structure information on what this stuff is and, and what it's all the boss about. So I hope you find this useful. I'm going to show some concepts, but then I'm going to, you know, uh, walk through code and examples and make it very practical as well. But I also want you to guys to get out uh, from, from this uh, session you know, a, a tangible understanding of does it work for me or not and, 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 and what is all this stuff about, okay? As I said, I'm going to set some context and talk about some, uh, 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 sorry, I'm going to set the context, I'm going to talk about some demos, then I'm going to present a point of view on GraphQL versus REST. Uh, uh, by this point, you would have already got the feeling on, on what this stuff is about and how you can construct queries or mutations and so on. And then I'm going to, you know, come up with my own conclusions that, that I'll share with you. APIs are doors. We all know that, right? They give us access to information and functionality. You know, without APIs, it'll be difficult to have omnichannel applications like mobile apps is a very simple example. But what happens when your door is not fit for purpose? Well, it's kind of difficult to use it, right? And that's kind of the point, right? Uh, sometimes in REST, and if, if you are, who of you are, you know, REST developers or have implemented REST or I would imagine most, most everyone. Who of you have implemented GraphQL in production? Or have gone through and experimented with GraphQL? Very few. So, so and, and I'm glad. So, so uh, uh, the whole idea of GraphQL is that it was actually built by Facebook to make the life of the developer easier. Most specifically, the UI or experience developer. It doesn't have to be a UI necessarily. It could be a, you know, a screen list. Uh, device, right? But, but the point being that, that in REST, because of the resource-oriented nature of modeling uh, uh, access to, to you know, uh, uh, information or, or resources, as it's called in REST, right? Sometimes it can be a bit chatty or it can be a bit, uh, if you may, impractical to do certain things, right? Or to fetch information from multiple, uh, if you may, if you have a, hate o, a resource and then you have hate O as a, a hypermedia, as the engine of state, you arise that then allow you to navigate through uh, 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 if you make different collections, right, just as you would in the normal web, you know, it's kind of, it can become complicated. Of course, you can do workarounds like put an API on top of other APIs that are kind of doing some sort of composition. But again, it it's, it's doesn't feel natural, right? And what GraphQL does is it makes that process a lot, a lot simpler. Uh, uh, it really simplifies the, 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 you know, the, the, the approach towards uh, fetching information from multiple sources, but also it provides a very strong query language to do that. Having said that, I just want to give some context. I think it's important to know, uh, you know, understand the facts. Uh, it was created by Facebook. I think you probably know that already. Uh, and as I've already implied, it's to get around common constraints on, on REST, especially when fetching data, although you can do more than that. But really, the strength uh, initially was around queries, you know, how you can do, you know, just like you do SQL queries against a database. Is there such a query language for web resources, right? Uh, it's, it's as of February 2018, actually, it also provides a very strong schema definition language. 
which means that, that, that when you implement a GraphQL service, it's strongly typed. I'll, go, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through that example in a bit more detail uh, uh, in a second. Uh, and I'm just sharing some links, uh, although you can find it on Google quite easily. But what is it not? I think it's important to, to, to you know, as well understand, uh, sometimes there's confusion because of the name. It can be misleading. So uh, I spoke to, to, to uh, 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 Ross, uh, uh, who, who was kind enough to, to actually uh, 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 come and, and share some uh, knowledge on what is not, right? And first of all, it's not a query language for databases. I think that's obvious, right? Uh, in spite of its name, it has nothing to do with graph or graph databases. Uh, the reason it's called GraphQL is because fa Facebook has a red, right? Uh, they see data, right, as a, as a series of objects that they refer to as graph. And therefore, GraphQL as a, as a language to, to query this graph of objects, right, makes sense. So that's, that's why it's called GraphQL. It's not because of graph databases, yeah? And this is important, right? And, uh, and I'm being now opinionative, right? It's not necessarily a replacement for REST. Uh, both can work together. And I'm going to talk a lot about this uh, uh, today as well. Uh, it could be a replacement. Like, uh, I think GitHub was one of the key ones that said, we're going to do GraphQL everything. I don't think every organization is GitHub, right, or Facebook. I think many organizations, you know, uh, well, I can tell from the audience, right, there's a lot of REST investments already. You cannot just go and say, oh, let's get rid of it, right? Could you leverage your REST resources and maybe use GraphQL to even make better use of those resources, right? And lastly, uh, it's not a silver bullet. Uh, and, and this is as well, as well very important. As I said, I'm not coming here to sell you GraphQL as a you know, silver bullet. I'm being very objective. So I hope that makes sense. So, so what is it then? So it's, it's three things, to be honest, right? It is a query language, a very, in my view, a strong query language for, for web resources. Uh, it's a strongly typed, so basically you define schema, you have scalar types, you have uh, input types, you have object types, you have query types, you have mutation types, you have union types, you have uh, interface types, you have a whole bunch of types, right, that allows you to define your data structures, right? Then you can quickly write a query, run it, and you get exactly what, you know, you asked for. But I, I'm going to show that this is true, so I'm just going to quickly do a demo, and then I'll come back. I think, you know, it's a developer conference, right, so, you know. So this is already running. I'm going to show how to start this up very quickly, uh, uh, but right now I just want to, you know, Show the example. So if I write, uh, sorry, names equal rate. Yeah. Let me prettify this. I think I'm missing. I'll just get the name. I'm not, ah, syntax error. OK, of course, because it's, I'm an idiot. Sorry. There you go. Uh, I'm not saying Great Britain is great. I'm saying I'm looking for countries that start with a great text, yeah? But it's great, I live here, so <laughs> just in case. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, uh. So I'll explain everything in a second and what it, I just did and how it works and how you set it up, right? But uh, I just wanted to show that, yeah, it's actually quite straightforward. I didn't even have to understand the, 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 the I didn't have to read documentation on the interface. There's this client called Graphical. That's how it's pronounced, that it kind of helps you navigate through the object structures and then it helps you construct the queries it's without having to go through a you know, Swagger document or an API blueprint or a RAML or a Waddle or whichever you know, specifications you use in REST. Uh, who's using it? Right, uh, we know Facebook, obviously, because they created it. Uh, uh, GitHub already said it, but actually, there's a lot more to it. I mean, there's a whole bunch of organizations already using it, and it's all public uh, 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 in, in, in their website. So, so it's, it's, it's getting a lot of popularity, and, uh, and, and that's why you're here, I would imagine, right? Uh, but let me, let me kind of dig, dig a, bit, a, a bit deeper into, you know, what is the boss, and, and is it really increasing in popularity? So if we comp this is just a very simple trend comparison in Google Trends. I did that uh, yesterday, I think, uh, the day before yesterday, I can't remember. Uh, I, I tried and, and searched for three uh, keys. One was GraphQL, REST APIs, and all data, just to put a reference, right? Uh, does any of you know who all data, what all data is? Good, don't find out. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> keep, keep it that way. No, just kidding. Some, like, SAP uses all data, for example, so sometimes you, yeah, it's kind of like a restish way of, uh, well, not quite. Anyways, uh, uh, the, the point being that, that GraphQL is, you can see, you know, uh, as of 2016, it was released in 2015, so it's, it's been picking up in, uh, uh, in popularity, right? 
but still rest is quite prevalent. But let, let me put this into perspective. Uh, uh, who remembers uh, Whistles and Soap, XML? Good, a lot of you. Well, you might remember this trend, right? So I think it was around 2013, right? The popularity just boomed, right? It was all about REST and JSON. Uh, uh, now, the trend for GraphQL for me is very, very clear. And having played with it, I think it's, I'm not going to say anything because then I spool my, my conclusions, but you make your own conclusions, yeah? But then the, <laughs> but then the, the, the trend on, 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 on REST, we will see. I would like to think that both can work together. In some cases, I think the GraphQL is stronger, but, but as I said, uh, we'll look at it uh, more deeply in a second. Now, uh, uh, now I, I want to talk through some very fundamental concepts in GraphQL that I think is important to understand before you actually go into, into of course, you can learn whilst coding, but at least from my experience, this helped a lot to understand why it was built and how everything hangs together. It's not a lot, uh, and then you can, we can quickly go through the example. So, so number one is hierarchical. So the whole idea is that you have object definitions, right, that can be connected amongst each other, almost like object orientation, right? It's, 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 but then you can introspect through them, which is uh, another of the points. It's view-centric. I would almost call it uh, 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 UI developer or UX development oriented, right? Uh, uh, the whole idea is to make it very, very simple to construct queries that, that are used to, to deliver experiences. Right, through whichever medium you are delivering that experience. It is extremely typed, even if you use Node.js or, or uh, another language that's uh, scripted, uh, even PHP or whatever. Uh, the specification is quite clear on how you need to interpret, for example, your, your schema. And if your schema is not well defined with the types as it expects, then it's just not going to run. So, so, and I think that's quite important because then it helps you construct those queries because you know exactly what is it that you're asking for and then you get those values back, and then you can construct your clients, right, according to what, what, what the, the, the types are. Uh, which is my next point, it's extremely type, I already said that. And another one is version free. I think this is a bit of a, uh, uh, personally, I think it's a bit of a, a controversial point. In REST, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to also keep versions, right? Uh, uh, you could, you know, treat uh, a REST endpoint as it would a, a normal web resource, right? And then you, you make sure that you have backwards compatibility, and that's what you evolve it, but in practice, I see a lot of V1s in URIs, right, or V2s in URIs. And, and you know, whether we like it or not, that kind of became a, a, a way of versioning REST APIs. In GraphQL, though, from the very start, they're very, very, you know, uh, uh, opinionative on how you version GraphQL and what they've done, which I think is good. They've, they've pro provided tools to deprecate, for example, types. So you can say, well, this type is deprecated, and the type could be a country, for example, which I'll show in a second, and then... Uh, 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 as a consumer, you can introspect and understand that this type is deprecated, so maybe if you're using it now, you should think about moving to the, to the new type that you're replacing it with. So it has some capabilities to make it easier to evolve your schema as opposed to having V1 in the URI. How everything hangs together, so the anatomy, I call it, right? So there are two things here. Uh, uh, one is the uh, schema definition language, right, which defines exactly what, you know, uh, uh, your GraphQL service uh, 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 supports, right, from, from an input and output uh, uh, and operation perspective. So that said, there are three types of operations, right, uh, uh, operation types uh, 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 are referred to. So queries, as kind of mentioned, mutations is how you manipulate data, so the equivalent of post, put, or patch in, in, in REST. And subscriptions. This is experimental. It's still under draft. It's not. Uh, uh, it's still a pull request in, in, in GitHub uh, in the specification. Subscription is, uh, uh, if I can summarize it, is more like a, a, a push notifications. So you, you subscribe. It's like a webhook. So you subscribe to a particular feed, and then you get boom. You get back a, 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 a single pushbacks. So they call it pop up system, right? But it's a web pop up system, more than anything else. So uh, 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 this, that's the schema, but then the, the, the beauty, as you saw in my example of GraphQL, is that each query, right, uh, uh, regardless of how, you know, what the query is, has to be executed. Something has to implement that logic. Basically, you have to go and collect the data from somewhere, right? In GraphQL, each field can be implemented separately in a function, which means that if you have a country, right, and country has name, it has a, a, a currency, it has, a, you know, capital. Each field you could fetch from different sources, right? And that's part of the specification. So regardless of the language, that's, you know, you have to understand this, right? Because then 
when you implement, you can be very flexible. You can go and collect information from five sources and then come back and aggregate that data and send it back to the client. And that's called resolvers. Resolvers is how you resolve each type within GraphQL. This, uh, I'll go through code and I think that'll be uh, easier to visualize uh, 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 what I said. But of course, a, a type like a query, for example, needs, needs an input and an output, and that's, that's why you have other, I, I refer to them as data types, although the specification doesn't explicitly classify them as data types. I refer to them as data types because that's what you're defining, uh, either an object or an input or a enumeration or an interface or an union of, of, of two different objects. Right, so uh, I kind of already described that, so I'm just going to skip it. You, you can download the slides later. Uh, in this cheat sheet, uh, if you download the slides, I think it's quite useful to, to kind of navigate through, through, the, uh, uh, through the specification and, and get a feeling on, on all this stuff that I just mentioned. At the beginning, it feels like a bit heavy to understand it, but it will take you a day, max, and then uh, maybe half a day. Uh, well, it depends, right? And then you'll be fine, I think. Right, so let's go through an example, yeah? So what I'm going to show in a second, right, is, well, I'm going to stand up a GraphQL server. So I've created three, de uh, three demos for this presentation. They're all in GitHub, so I'm just going to download my Git repo. I'm going to start it up from scratch, as you would if you were doing it yourself. I'm going to run this GraphQL server. I'm going to open a browser. That tool that I showed earlier is called Graphical. So I'll, I'll put it as a uh, GraphQL client, but I'm just going to open the Graphical endpoint. Uh, uh, and then I'm going to construct a query, right? And I'll get the data. But then I'll show you what exactly is happening behind the curtains. So you start seeing, you know, the meat on this stuff, yeah? So let me just close my, my screen. Right? And I'm just going to... I think I have it open here, but I'll start from scratch. Oh, there you go. Right, so this is my GitHub repo. Uh, I think it's this small, so I need to probably make it bigger. Right, so that's my server running. The, 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 the one that I, uh, I'm using Atom, by the way. So I'm, I'm not gonna go use here. Uh, Right, so I'm just downloading the whole repo and that's it, right? So you can just do it yourself uh, with me right now if you want. Right, so I got samples. I'm just going to start with the first one, which is quite simple. Yeah, so I'm using Node.js, uh, uh, but there are specifications in Java, in Ruby, in Python, uh, whichever language makes sense. Uh, I started with Node.js. It's a bit dark. I hope that you can see it. It's too small, actually. Uh, I'm using Node.js for one simple reason. That's the, the sample specification or the, the reference specification, sorry, by uh, Facebook is, is in, in Node.js. So I thought I'd get a feeling for, for you know, how the, you know, the language that, that, that that's native to it, and then maybe I can play with all the languages. We use Java a lot in, in my company, so, so probably Java will be another option that we'll be testing. Right. So. What I'm going to do here, right, if I, if I open my project, right, uh, I have all the documentation so you can follow the steps from scratch and, and, and so I'm not going to go through that now, but, but you can do it later. I'm just creating a very, very simple Express server. Express is a HTTP engine in Node.js, so it's quite popular. Uh, uh, I'm using Apollo Express. So Apollo is one of the implementations of, uh, uh, it's one of the GraphQL implementations available. There is uh, two, I think, uh, the, the GraphQL one created by Facebook and Apollo, which is kind of an enhanced version of it. I quite like it. Uh, the reason being is I think, first of all, if you Google, if you do a lot of research on GraphQL, you see that the blocks created by the Apollo team is just absolutely amazing. I think they've done a brilliant job at sharing knowledge. So for me, that's a good driver of, well, there has got to be you know, good features in this product. So, so and I started trying it, and I quite like it. I think it's, it's, it's good. Uh, but you don't have to use it, the, the, uh, uh, the, the other uh, uh, tools. And then Apollo uh, also comes with uh, GraphQL tools, and GraphQL tools uh, I will explain in a second, as I show. But it's basically, it helps me uh, uh, combine, for example, the schema and the functions into something executable that I'm calling a service. So the first part, right, well, I start the server. It was straightforward. Then what I do, I define the types uh, 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 
and this is, again, as I said, very, very important. If you don't have types, it's simply you don't have GraphQL, right? So I'm defining a country type, right? Uh, uh, just adding some information in there. And, uh, and I'm defining a query, right, that's taking that as argument, right, a string, whichever string you define in the query, and I'm sending back a collection of countries, yeah? Uh, and then I'm, I'm hard coding some data, so, so I'm cheating in this example, right? I'm just, I'm not calling anything in the back end, but we will in a second, yeah? And actually we're going to call a famous REST uh, uh, endpoint called REST countries, and you see the difference, right, on how easy it is in GraphQL as opposed to, to doing it directly. And then, then we can have a, a debate. <laughs> uh, and then the, uh, I'm writing the resolver. As I said, uh, uh, I'm doing it at, at, at the operation level, right? Uh, uh, the resolver is what actually executes your operations, right, your query operation. Uh, let me just highlight this bit here. So I define a query, and the query has an operation called get countries. Who, I mean, a few of you are from the SOAP whistle world. Uh, uh, it's, I don't want to create controversy, but it's kind of, <laughs> you define operations and, and, and it's down to you what an operation is, which is great, but it can be a bit dangerous. Uh, so many horror stores in SOAP where people created so many operations for so many different things and they call them similarly. Whereas in REST, is, you know, because you're respecting the, the specification and you follow the HTTP verbs, you have to be an idiot to get it wrong. I mean, I mean it's possible. I mean, you can call a resource uh, 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 forward slash uh, get countries, right? But mm, probably not, right? Uh, in here, you define queries, right? But uh, again, you should follow good practice, and, and there are some good practices blocks posts around, right? So, so but you can define whichever query you want. It's down to you. Uh, then you have the resolvers, as I said before, and here is how I implement the query, right? That's just the specification, now this is part of the server, right? And, and that's why in my diagram before, I, I, I clearly show that the, 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 the two are related, but are not exactly the same thing, right? The resolver is now saying, this is how you resolve it. And this is, this is if you make them, it's making the magic, right? This is what, what, what generates something, right? Uh, 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 the execution uh, uh, component, right? That then I can run within my express server. So if I start this up, right, uh, sorry, I forgot to say, and then this, this is the graphical endpoint that I'm using as client. It's uh, open source, I think. Uh, uh, you have it in, in, in all languages. You can use the same client, right? It's JavaScript-based. Um, in production, you probably will disable this client. However, in, in development, you want the developers to very quickly construct queries, and then probably in your code, you just take the query that you constructed and, and, and use that query. You want to use this directly in your code. It's just making it easier for you to, to construct queries, yeah? So I'll just start this server, yeah. And, ah, of course, because I just downloaded and I'm, uh, I forgot that I was using the... I need to install it because I just downloaded it. Live demo and I'm... There you go. So it's installing all the dependencies, uh, 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 defining packages.js, basically libraries and stuff I'm using. Yeah. And now I should be able to start this up. I'm using Node-mon, so I can just change it on the fly, and I don't have to stop and start the, the, the server. So now, uh, if I come back to... Let me just change the location of this window, so... So I don't have to, yeah. Right, if, if, I, if I come back to my browser, I'll zoom it up in a second. And open the input graphical, right? Very mind that in my server, I defined the port 3000, so that's, that was also down to me. And I open graphical. What graphical is doing, and this is another feature of GraphQL called introspection, right? You can actually query for the schema. So if you inspect the traffic, I'm not going to do it now, but if you inspect the traffic using Chrome, you see what one of the, the values that you're, what, one of the um, uh, collections that you're getting is actually the whole schema that I've just defined. And that's how this client is able to guide me through, right, the process of defining a query. Let me zoom this up. Right, so I don't, I don't, imagine I don't, I don't know the API. I don't, I don't know what, what it does, right? So I just, if you understand the notation, 
it just guides me through you know, the fields, right? And then I can, for example, click at the docs, and it's telling me you know, what this is, right? Which is quite interactive, I think, compared to, to traditional REST, yeah? So if, as I said, if I call, then I get this back, right? But this is, this is kind of cheating, right? I'm not, I'm not really calling anything, and, and that's not good, right? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use a popular countries API called REST countries. I think it's probably, uh, it's a good example because it's, uh, I think it's well written according to REST standards, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's free, and you can just go and start using it, uh, for example, right now. And it gives me some nice endpoints that I can then use to, to show my, uh, to, to make my point. Like, for example, if I want to query all countries, I'm getting all countries, right? Uh, if I want to query a country called all the countries that start with great, uh oh, what did I do? Of course, I forgot the URI. Yeah, so it's I'm gonna be using this this REST public REST public API as my backend for my GraphQL implementation. So hopefully, I'm going to make it easier to, 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 to query this, this resource. And then I'm going to show you what I can do in GraphQL that, that really simplifies, right? And makes it stronger, right? To, 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 to leverage uh, uh, this resource that already exists. So now I'll go back to, to my console. I'm going to shoot this off, yeah. And I have, I have the part two of my example. Now, this part two, I, as I said, is all documented. I did it for this presentation, step by step, on how to, how to construct this from scratch. Right now, I'm just kind of, I don't have the time to, to build it from scratch, but uh, I, I, I'll do my best uh, to, to, to explain it properly, yeah? I made a change, right? So, right, so if I open my, my uh, 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 demo part two, yeah? What did I do now? So first of all, it's not a good practice to put all the lo all, absolutely everything in a single file because then you, you don't separate concerns. It's very difficult to distinguish what's a type, what's a, what's a resolver, what's data, what's not. So I've separated two things, right? So I, I kept the server.js very, very lean, right? So all I'm doing is loading the types, the resolvers, right? And then I'm just generating the, the executable that I run and present in my, in my uh, Express uh, uh, application server. And then the types, as I said, are separated now. But then you'll see something different in the resolver. In the resolver, I'm not just hard coding a response. I actually commented it out. You can see on the top. What I'm doing now, if you see at the bottom, I'm calling a, 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 a function called countries.getCountriesByName. And, and, and what I'm doing is, well, countries is implemented in a different file uh, 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 called data.js. I mean, you, you can follow your own convention. There are different conventions on how to do it. I'm just uh, uh, following my own, to be honest. Uh, and in data, right, I'm, well, I'm using some libraries to make it easier to, to, to iterate through collections, but also I'm using fetch, node fetch, sorry, which is a very popular and nice uh, library in JavaScript to, to call HTTP endpoints, right? So, and then what I'll do is, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in the function, right, that takes us an argument, a name, I'm going to call... If I don't get any filter, I'm going to call all, so I get all countries, right? Uh, uh, if you don't have a filter, it means that you want them all, I would assume. And, uh, and, uh, and, and if it is undefined, meaning uh, uh, if it is not undefined, sorry, then I'll actually go and fetch a country by name. And then, of course, uh, because it's, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it's promise-based, then I just, you know, the, uh, when the promise is fulfilled, then I, I, I just uh, get the collection. Iterate through it and present it in my in my in, in the in the uh, variable in the object type that I define for for that specific uh, uh, query, which is country, and that's, I'm respecting the structure of country. If I break it, it will not work. As I said, GraphQL is a strictly type. I need to I need to completely comply with the specification, and that's all I'm doing here. I'm complying with the output that I define in my query. So I'm going to start this up. Ah, 
Sorry, guys. I keep forgetting that I just unloaded this uh, project. And this is where things start getting more interesting. Yeah. So we're good now. I hope. Right, so I need to refresh my, my browser because I'm downloaded the new schema definition right, that I just created. Otherwise, my, my, my client is still in the previous version, right? So I just refresh the browser. Although I, I didn't really make any change, so, so it, it, it would have been fine, but just, just explain the concept, yeah? What I'm going to do now, right, so you actually see the difference. Uh, 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 I'm going to be a bit more elegant now in how I construct the query, so I'm going to define that the operation I'm doing is a query. And I'm going to get countries, this time all of them. Sorry, I don't need to. Uh, and I'm going to get two values, name and code. So I got them all. It should have been around 250, right? So I just, if you see at the, at the log, what it did, all I'm logging at the bottom, you can see it here, I'm logging every single call I do in, in sorry, every single call I'm doing in GraphQL. So, so because I didn't pass an argument, it's just calling the, you know, all URI in, in the REST countries uh, uh, API. And I just counted the result. It's just a console.log that I added to, to explain, yeah? If I come back here, but I want to do three, three queries in one go. I want to I, I wanna call three different, I want to search, I want to do three different searches on strings on countries. If I had to do that in REST, I would probably have to make three calls or create some sort of aggregator that makes three calls, right? So I'm just going to do it very quickly. So I, I'm going to use alias. So I call this, this query country one. I want to create another one called country two. I want to create another one. Well, actually, I should put some filters, right? So name, great. I also want name, united. Yeah, and the third one, name. Venezuela, because I'm from Venezuela, right? So I have to, right. Which is, you find it a bit annoying that I have to add the types, the, the fields every single time, right? So I'll fix that in a second. But that's it. I got around my query, boom, I have my three responses. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So what happened? There you go. And this is, this is really, for me, when I started playing with GraphQL, this is where I started getting, okay, this is what the boss is all about. It's really simplifying the way I you know, uh, I collect data from multiple sources, right? In this case, all I said is fetch, well, it was iterating through each field, right? Because I have three operations. Each operation is going to be executed in, a, in, a, in the same resolver. So you call the URL three times. So in, in REST, I would have probably have to call this three times. Of course, you can, as I said, you can create a utility that will do this for you, and, and you can be clever, in, in, but then you almost constructing GraphQL from scratch, right? which is what this is doing for you. It's, it's, it's providing this functionality as part of the specification. Now, I want to dig deeper into, into, the, into the language itself. I don't want to be repeating uh, these fields uh, uh, every single time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to define something called a fragment. I call it fields. Yeah, on country. And now... I actually want all the fields. You can see that it's, it's, a, it's a bit annoying that, uh, that, uh, that I have to enter all the fields I want, but that's kind of part of the principle. You get what you ask for. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to do in, I get all. Or I'm supposed to just getting what the REST API is giving me. And of course, in REST, you can kind of, this API, for example, has a, a way to filter fields. But it's kind of a workaround, right? You have to provide in the get URL the fields that you want, right? And not all APIs have that feature. And yeah, okay, that's fine. There's this a constraint, but... I think GraphQL does it a lot linear, I think. So I'm going to add a few more fields, region, whatever. And then I'm just going to tell each query, look, just, just, just pick up the, 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 the fragment. You know? uh, I, don't, I don't need to you know, every single time specify the fields. 
right? And if I execute this, it's just giving me exactly the same response. Now, this is the language per se. I'm not, I ha I'm not even touching the server. Now I'm truly exploring the capabilities of the language. So, and it has a lot of features. So the, 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 the better you become at, at writing queries, right, then you know, the more ex you can exploit the, the functionality of the, of, the, of the server the most, right? The functionality of GraphQL per se the most. Uh, 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 and, and again, uh, uh, this is just a very simple example. But then, for example, uh, I don't want to pass, I want the great United, basically the name argument to come as a variable because probably you will get that from outside your, your implementation, right? So what I'll do then, uh, uh, on the query, I'll define, uh, uh, I call my query, uh, this is optional, right, but I call it, it's a good practice query, my query. And in here, I'm gonna add name one, string, name two, a string, name three, name three, a string. It's complaining because I'm not using it, right? So I should be able to, actually let me cheat a little bit. One, two, sorry, three. That should do the trick. Right, it's getting me 250 times three, 750 because I didn't provide any filters. Let me just check. Yeah, three times 250. So because I didn't define what the input for the name variable is, right? So in this client, you can define it, but in principle, if you're writing this in a, I don't know, an Angular client or whatever, right, you would probably pass this as a JSON uh, uh, a collection, right? That will uh, 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 replace the values on, on, on the variables of the query. So. In the, in the query, I'll just define the names. Right, great, the same thing I did before. Yeah. And I just put. Right, so now I should get my, my proper response. Yeah, so now uh, I have less values because. Uh, 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 I included the values of the of the variables. Um, so, so I think I think by now you're starting to see what this FOSS is all about, right? It's it's quite simple, really. It's for me, it's it's an API composition capability. It allows me to create. I don't want to call it a gateway yet, but it's kind of like a like a proxy, right? That takes queries, right, or mutations as, as, as part of the, the the query or the mutation that you construct, right? And then it provides a specification for you to implement that query. And then you can, you know, if, if for example, in your organization you have several REST, uh, several REST APIs, so it doesn't have to be backend APIs, it could be anything, it could be a database, or it could be, well, you name it, right? You can just aggregate the data, right? Uh, go in parallel, collect the data from the different endpoints, right? In, into a single entry, which is your GraphQL service, and then send it back to the client. And I think that's really powerful. I have 12 minutes left. I, have, I, I had another example. I, I think I'm going to skip now the example, and I'm going to go to the next part of the presentation, which I think is useful to, to, to compare the two. Uh, but please do go to, uh, to my GitHub repo. If you're interested in this, I have documented absolutely everything. So it's quite simple. Louis W19, GraphQL samples. Everything is properly documented, so you can build everything from scratch, including mutations, which I don't have, to talk about, I don't have the time to talk about now. Uh, so if I go back to my presentation, right, to, to start wrapping up, this is what I just did, right, uh, the example. I go back to my presentation, yeah, don't see this yet. So let's compare the two. Now you've got a feeling, I've described some theory, I went into practice, I showed you you know, at a high level, what you know, how to construct a, a, a server with some queries, right? Uh, how to define a, a schema, how to combine that with a resolver and make it executable uh, using the Apollo uh, GraphQL server. I want to compare the two based on different uh, factors, right? So let's start with developer experience, right? Again, this is completely subjective based on my point of view. Don't shoot me. 
you can you know do your own research and make your own conclusions, but I, I just want to share, as I said, my experience, right? So from a developer experience, I don't think nothing can match GraphQL if you're a UI developer. It, it's really going to make your life a lot easier. You don't have to make three or four REST calls to actually get exactly what you want. Especially imagine you're building a homepage for an e-commerce website, and then you need the, the, the account, you need the latest orders, you need the delivery, you need the, I don't know, and that probably will, you know, it probably is implemented in different APIs, especially if you're going, if you're implementing microservices and you're, you're calling resources from different bounded contexts, then definitely you have to, you know, make different calls, right? This could be just a, you know, proxy and boom, help you out with, with constructing, making just one call, yeah? Uh, uh, and in REST, of course, you can have very well-documented APIs. I show one very well-documented API. So, but it depends, right? You're not forced by the specification to write good documentation. Some APIs are not documented, and then good luck, right? That's why I'm saying, you know, in REST, it depends, right? Now, who's familiar with the concept of API design first? Well, I do recommend that you research on it. If you're building REST, API design first is a really, really good approach to focus on the interface, right? And there are tools like Swagger Hub or Apiary that helps you very quickly create mockups so your API consumers can give you feedback, and that feedback loop will help you get the designs properly very quickly before you write the code. Now, in GraphQL, that's not really there. You have some very good libraries, but you need to write a server, you need to write your specification, you need to run it, and then you need to mock the data. Uh, it would take me a bit longer to, 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 to do that uh, in GraphQL that I, that I couldn't rest with existing tooling. So I would say that from a consumption standpoint, definitely amazing, I have to say, you know, uh, 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 to Caesar what Caesars is an Spanish saying. Uh, uh, but in terms of tooling for design first, not quite there yet. API gateway pattern. If you're doing microservices and you've read microservices.io, you know that API gateway is an important pattern in microservices, right? Uh, uh, if, you, if you start doing research on, on, on GraphQL, it's not, some, some people position GraphQL as an API gateway. Well, it's more than just aggregation, an API gateway. You're implementing security policies. You're doing things like uh, oath authentication or authorization. You're doing uh, uh, throttling. You're doing OWASP uh, threat protection, things like uh, uh, SQL injection protection or XML bolt protection. Uh, you're doing routing. You're doing, I mean, there's a whole bunch of capabilities that you get uh, from, a, from a, an API gateway like, like Kong, or I use Oracle API gateway uh, as well a lot, which is a, a new product. Um, so, so for me, I think, you know, it, it, GraphQL as a technology, is, is, is just, it needs to start merging with existing capabilities, right? You cannot just go and reinvent the wheel entirely. Uh, I think it's adding a lot of value, but, but I think a gateway pattern adds a lot of value to you. And I think if you combine the two, it is possible because you have one endpoint, which is GraphQL, forward, forward slash GraphQL. You don't have more endpoints. Everything then is based on the queries and mutations. Uh, but, but I'll probably use both, actually, in production. Because I, I want to implement Oath, and I'm not going to implement Oath by code because I have many services, and I do it in the gateway. It's easier. So, or maybe you want to do it in code. It's up to you. But uh, I think gateway adds a lot of value. Uh, uh, uh. So I think from a REST standpoint, the tooling is there. It's mature. You can start using it straight away. So, so yeah. So I would say that in this particular uh, uh, criteria, I think uh, uh, REST is more mature and has better tooling. API composition, as I said, this is, this is where I think GraphQL is really adding a lot of value, right? It, it's giving you the ability to compose. It, this is another pattern by microservices.io. Uh, uh, it's, 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 again, something that you typically have to solve when you implement microservices, because if you're being elegant in how you define your bounded context, right, you, you, you most likely will end up in situations where if you need data from multiple bounded contexts for a specific user experience, how do you do it? You let the client do it, you build something in the middle to do it, well, GraphQL could be a good way of solving that problem. In fact, it's excellent at that, to be honest. REST, great. You have very well modeled resources, which I like, but from a consumption perspective, perhaps not, not the easiest, always. Um, authentication, authorization, I've already kind of mentioned this, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, touch upon again. But, I mean, if you, if you start reading on GraphQL, there's, there's a fundamental challenge, I see, right? Because you only have one URI, one thing I typically do in Oath, especially implementing the implicit flow, for example, which is recommended for security purposes, right? I can use scopes within, within, within my uh, uh, audience, right? It's, how, it's, it's part of the J, JSON web token specification, right? To, con, to provide a, 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 a authorization right, to define authorization rights on specific resources. 
So I can say, well, this user can access forward slash countries ID, right? Or forward slash, you know, you can then define different hierarchies of authorization. But because GraphQL only has one endpoint, which is forward slash GraphQL, then how do you do it? Well, then you need to code it. So then there, there's good blocks, especially by a poll team, on how you can code authorization. But again, it's like, okay, well, you know, reinventing, it's like having to reinvent the wheel a little bit, but hey, I, th I think it's, to be honest, I think it's worth it because it's, it's a very strong uh, query language. Caching. Well, one beautiful thing about REST is that, you know, because each URI is unique, right? Or each resource is unique, sorry, let me put it properly. You could cache, right, uh, uh, the result using the standard network capabilities like a, a, a CDM, for example. If you're using Akamai in your organization, right, you can use Akamai as well for REST APIs, not necessarily just for, for web APIs. But now you only have one endpoint, right, and the data will change it according to your queries. So caching is a bit more complicated. You have to do it on the, on, either on the server side, on the code, on the implementation, so you can use something like Redis or Coherence or whatever you prefer for, for, for a memory cache, for example, or you can use Cassandra, or I don't know. Uh, 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 or you can do it on the client side, but then you cannot leverage tools that are already in the industry. So I think that's a bit of a, you know, it's not great, right, that I, that I have to, I cannot leverage existing capabilities. Lastly, versioning. Uh, 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 I think I like the fact that in, in there's a point of view, a strong point of view in GraphQL, uh, in the GraphQL communities on how to do versioning in GraphQL. REST, by the way, and, and I'm just pasting a, a tweet from, from Roy Fielding, right? You, I'm sure you know who he is, right? Oh, I hope, <laughs> if, you're building, if you're building REST APIs. You could, in REST, it, wasn't never, it was never encouraged to, to keep versions on your eyes and stuff like that, or headers, right? But it kind of ended up being the case, given that there wasn't a very strong point of view on how to do it. In GraphQL, there's a strong op, uh, point of view and, 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 and capabilities are being put in place so you can evolve your schemas, right? As opposed to version the whole thing. And I quite like that, to be honest. Uh, uh, so that's why I'm giving, you know, I'm giving uh, thumbs up to, to, to GraphQL for versioning and, and a bit, you know, not the best for, for REST. Although I'm, maybe I'm being a bit unfair. If you stick to the best practices, but if you don't... <laughs> well, yeah, but, yeah, absolutely right. But because it's new, <laughs> we will see in one year. Uh, maybe, maybe... We'll be good this time. Uh, exactly. Okay. It will be in one year, everyone will we have for version one for slash GraphQL, and then, you know, that, that's the best practice, right? And then I need to change the slide. We will see. <laughs> uh, so this is my completely subjective uh, 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 scoring. I think GraphQL is really good. It can only improve. I think REST is still quite powerful. I would use both, and that's kind of my conclusion, right? It's, it's early days. It has huge potential. But there's no reason why you cannot use both. I think, in fact, for me, where I have many clients and, and I work with many organizations where there's a whole bunch of REST endpoints, I can see a perfect fit for using GraphQL for you know, making it easier to, to, to exploit the potential of those REST endpoints. I'm not sure I would replace them, at least not yet. We will see. Uh, and there's no silver bullets. You, know? you need to do your own research and make your own conclusions, uh, understand your requirements, I'm sharing this information. It will help you, but you probably have to do a bit more. Um, and, and there's a very interesting community, right? Uh, 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 it's growing by the day, and, and there's a whole bunch of resources that you can just read to get up to speed quite quickly. Uh, that com concludes my presentation. Uh, I think we have about 1.3 minutes to answer questions. So who has a question that's simple to answer? <laughs> Any questions, please? Yes. You can, but there will be different implementations. So there will be one GraphQL endpoint per service. So the GraphQL endpoint will be the service. And to be honest, you can package it in a Docker and run it as a microservice. I mean, well, define microservices, right? But, but if you're using it as I'm using it, right, it's acting as a proxy, not really uh, a microservice because it doesn't have its own data. But you could also use it as a microservice, meaning within a bounded context connected to its own data store. So it's down to you. Another question? Yep. Uh, looking at the examples around, I see um, the backing queries that are getting the actual data are using these data loaders where they're sort of batching them on a field level. Yes.
So you need to optimize the treatment for the database backwards and forwards rather than naively just firing a query across here. It just wouldn't fit with what you're looking to use it for. Um, and I've seen some people that are doing this. Have you got any thoughts about the feasibility, the complexity of doing this kind of implementation? So, so so, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll try and answer your question. So, so in my view, if it is very simple, it's probably simpler to use REST, to be honest. I, mean, I, I find it very simple. I mean, it's extremely simple to stand up a REST sample, yeah? That's point number one, right? As you start growing in complexity and you start having to deal with more data, especially from a client perspective, right? Uh, uh, then the question rises, that JPA that you're using with your Java microservice might, might just be one. Right of the of the of the endpoints, right that you that, that that you have to hit, and the reason being is it's really in an organization, right? You have just one database, right? You have a whole bunch of systems, right? The danger here, and I think that's what you're pointing out, is because each field can be implemented separately, right? You can end up with a whole bunch of cascade of calls, right? That can also make it very inefficient from a server side. Uh, I, I guess I guess my point of view, you need to look at both, how the back-end service implementation looks like, right, and, 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 and what the consumers are trying to do. Perhaps, you know, in some cases, as I said, not always you need to replace back, the back-end REST service with, with GraphQL, but it could be the case because then you can optimize your query, right, uh, based on what the user is sending as opposed to just leveraging something that's prefixed within your JPA. I'm not sure if I answer it, but that, that would be my, my take. <laughs> I think where time is up, uh, I'll be around, so thank you so much for your time. <laughs>